The end Logan plunged through the trees, bare feet slipping and sliding on the wet earth, the slush, the wet pine needles breath rasping in his chest, blood thumping in his head. He stumbled and sprawled onto his side, nearly cut his chest open with his own axe, lay there panting, peering through the shadowy forest. The dogman had been with him until a moment before. He was sure, but there wasn't any sign of him now. As for the others, there was no telling. Some leader, getting split up from his boys like that. He should have been trying to get back. But the Shanka were all around. He could feel them moving between the trees, his nose was full of the smell of them. Sounded as if there was some shouting somewhere on his left, fighting maybe. Logan crept slowly to his feet, trying to stay quiet. A twig snapped and he whipped round. There was a spear coming at him. A cruel-looking spear. Coming at him fast with a shanka on the other end of it. Shit, said Logan. He threw himself to one side, slipped and fell on his face, rolled away thrashing through the brush. Expecting the spear throughout his back at any moment, he scrambled up, breathing hard. He saw the bright point poking at him again, dodged out of the way, slithered behind a big tree trunk. He peered out and the flathead hissed and stabbed at him. He showed himself on the other side, just for a moment, then ducked away, jumped round the tree and swung the axe down. Roaring loud as he could, there was a crack as the blade buried itself deep in the Shanka's skull. Lucky that, but then Logan reckoned he was due a little luck. The flathead stood there, blinking at him. Then it started to sway from side to side, blood dribbling down its face. Then it dropped like a stone, dragging the axe from Logan's fingers, thrashing around on the ground. At his feet, he tried to grab hold of his axe handle but the Shanka still somehow had a grip on its spear and the point was flailing around in the air. Got squawked Logan as the spear cut a nick in his arm. He felt a shadow fall across his face. Another flathead, a damn big one, already in the air, arms outstretched. No time to get the axe. No time to get out of the way. Logan's mouth opened, but there was no time to say anything. What do you say at a time like that? They crashed to the wet ground together. Rolled together through the dirt and the thorns and the broken branches. Tearing and punching and growling at each other. A tree root hit Logan in the head, hard, and made his ears ring. He had a knife somewhere, but he couldn't remember where. They rolled on and on. Downhill, the world flipping and flipping around, Logan trying to shake the fuzz out of his head and throttle the big flathead at the same time. There was no stopping. It had seemed a clever notion to pitch camp near the gorge. No chance of anyone sneaking up behind. Now, as Logan slid over the edge of the cliff on his belly, the idea lost much of its appeal. His hands scrabbled at the wet earth. Only dirt and brown pine needles. His fingers clutched, clutched at nothing. He was beginning to fall. He let go a little whimper. His hands closed around something. A tree root, sticking out from the earth at the very edge of the gorge. He swung in space, gasping, but his grip was firm. Ha, he shouted. Ha, he was still alive. It would take more than a few flatheads to put an end to Logan Nine Fingers. He started to pull himself up onto the bank but couldn't manage it. There was some great weight around his legs. He peered down. The gorge was deep, very deep with sheer, rocky sides. Here and there a tree clung to a crack, growing out into the empty air and spreading its leaves into space. The river hissed away far below, fast and angry, foaming white water fringed by jagged black stone. That was all bad, for sure. But the real problem was closer to hand. The big Shanka was still with him, swinging gently back and forth with its dirty hands clamped tight around his left ankle. Shit, muttered Logan. It was quite a scrape he was in. He'd been in some bad ones all right, and live to sing the songs but it was hard to see how this could get much worse. That got him thinking about his life. It seemed a bitter, pointless sort of a life now. No one was any better off because of it. Full of violence and pain, with not much but disappointment and hardship in between. 
His hands were starting to tire now, his forearms were burning. The big flathead didn't look like it was going to fall off any time soon. In fact, it had dragged itself up his leg away. It paused, glaring up at him. If Logan had been the one clinging to the Shanka's foot, he would most likely have thought, my life depends on this leg I'm hanging from, best not take any chances. A man would. Rather save himself than kill his enemy. Trouble was that the Shanka didn't think that way, and Logan knew it. So it wasn't much of a surprise when it opened its big mouth and sank its teeth into his calf. Arg! Logan grunted, and squealed and kicked out as hard as he could with his bare heel. Kicked a bloody gash in the shank his head, but it wouldn't stop biting, and the harder he kicked the more his hand slipped on the greasy root above. There wasn't much root left to hold on to, now. And what there was looked like snapping off any moment. He tried to think past the pain in his hands, the pain in his arms, the flathead's teeth in his leg. He was going to fall. The only choice was between falling on rocks or falling on water, and that was a choice that more or less made itself. Once you've got a task to do, it's better to do it than to live with the fear of it. That's what Logan's father would have said. So he planted his free foot firmly on the rock face, took one last deep breath and flung himself out into empty space with all the strength he had left. He felt the biting teeth let go of him, then the grasping hands, and for a moment he was free. Then he began to fall. Fast. The sides of the gorge flashed past grey rock, green moss, patches of white snow, all tumbling around him. Logan turned over slowly, in the air, limbs flailing pointlessly, too scared to scream. The rushing wind whipped at his eyes, tugged at his clothes, plucked the breath out of his mouth. He saw the big Shanka hit the rock face beside him. He saw it break and bounce and flop off. Dead for sure. That was a pleasing sight, but Logan's satisfaction was short-lived. The water came up to meet him. It hit him in the side like a charging bull, punched the air out of his lungs. Knocked the sense out of his head, sucked him in and down into the cold darkness. The survivor's the lapping of water in his ears. That was the first thing. The lapping of water, the rustling of trees, the odd click and twitter of a bird. Logan opened his eyes a crack. Light. Blurry bright through leaves. This was death. Then why did it hurt so much? His whole left side was throbbing. He tried to take a proper breath, choked, coughed up water, spat out mud. He groaned, flopped over onto his hands and knees, dragged himself up out of the river, gasping through clenched teeth, rolled onto his back in the moss and slime and rotten sticks at the water's edge. He lay there for a moment, staring up at the grey sky beyond the black branches, breath wheezing in his raw throat. I am still alive, he croaked to himself. Still alive. In spite of the best efforts of nature, Shanka, men and beasts. Soaking wet and flat on his back, he started to chuckle. Reedy, gurgling laughter. Say one thing for Logan Nine Fingers. Say he's a survivor. A cold wind blew across the rotting river bank, and Logan's laughter slowly died. Alive he might be, but staying alive, that was another question. He sat up, wincing at the pain. He tottered to his feet, leaning against the nearest tree trunk. He scraped the dirt out of his nose, his eyes, his ears. He pulled up his wet shirt to take a look at the damage. His side was covered in bruises from the fall. Blue and purple stains all up his ribs. Tender to the touch, and no mistake, but it didn't feel like anything was broken. His leg was a mess. Torn and bloody from the shank, his teeth. It hurt bad, but his foot still moved well enough, and that was the main thing. He'd need his foot if he was going to get out of this. He still had his knife in the sheath at his belt, and he was mightily glad to see it. You could never have too many knives in Logan's experience, and this was a good one. But the outlook was still bleak. He was on his own, in woods crawling with flatheads. He had no idea where he was, but he could follow the river. 
The rivers all flowed north, from the mountains to the cold sea. Follow the river southwards, against the current. Follow the river and climb up, into the high places where the shank couldn't find him. That was his only chance. It would be cold up there, this time of year. Deadly cold. He looked down at his bare feet. It was just his luck that the Shanka had come while he had his boots off, trimming his blisters. No coat either, he'd been sitting near the fire. Like this, he wouldn't last a day in the mountains. His hands and feet would turn black in the night, and he'd die bit by bit before he even reached the passes. If he didn't start first. Shit, he muttered. He had to go back to the camp. He had to hope the flatheads had moved on, hope they'd left something behind. Something he could use to survive. That was an awful lot of hoping, but he had no choice. He never had any choices. It had started to rain by the time Logan found the place. Spitting drops that plastered his hair to his skull, kept his clothes wet through. He pressed himself against a mossy trunk and peered out towards the camp, heart pounding, fingers of his right hand curled painful tight around the slippery grip of his knife. He saw the blackened circle where the fire had been, half-burned sticks and ash trampled round it. He saw the big log three trees and Dow had been sitting on when the flatheads came. He saw odd bits of torn and broken gear scattered across the clearing. He counted three dead Shanka crumpled on the ground, one with an arrow poking out of its chest. Three dead ones. But no sign of any alive. That was lucky. Just lucky enough to survive, as always. Still, they might be back at any moment. He had to be quick. Logan scuttled out from the trees, casting about on the ground. His boots were still there where he'd left them. He snatched them up and dragged them onto his freezing feet, hopping around, almost slipping in his haste. His coat was there too, wedged under the log, battered and scarred from ten years of weather and war, torn and stitched back together, missing half a sleeve. His pack was lying shapeless in the brush nearby, its contents strewn out down the slope. He crouched, breathless, throwing it all back inside. A length of rope, his old clay pipe, some strips of dried meat, needle and twine, a dented flask with some liquor still sloshing inside. All good. All useful. There was a tattered blanket snagged on a branch wet and half caked in grime. Logan pulled it up, and grinned. His old, battered cook pot was underneath. Lying on its side, kicked off the fire in the fight maybe. He grabbed hold of it with both 